Hey friends, welcome. Today we are going to discuss the kinetics of a branched chain reaction. So in our previous lecture, we have seen the kinetics of chain reaction, and we have taken the example of the formation of HBr, and then we have seen or derived its rate. So what are basically the branched chain reactions? Those reactions are basically wherein the quantum yield generally we have seen in photochemistry quantum yield uh, that is the ratio of the number of moles reacted to the number of uh, quantas of the radiation absorbed so number of moles that are reacted divided by number of uh, quantas of radiation absorbed so this ra this ratio it gives us the quantum yield and generally we know that when quantum yield is uh, either one so either one that means the total number of radiation that is absorbed will excite one molecule wherein if quantum yield phi is greater than one then the one mole of uh, one quanta of the radiation absorbed it activates more than one molecule so over here the branched chain reactions are the reactions wherein the quantum yield is generally greater than one and uh, as a result more amount of the active carriers are formed and further reaction will take place so this type of reactions were studied independently by uh, two of the scientists uh, one of them is a soviet or a russian scientist uh, that is nn uh, semeno and the second scientist that we know it very well that is hn sorry cn henselwood so C. N. Henselwood. Uh, so he uh, studied these reactions in around 1897 to 1967, and both these scientists uh, in 1956 they were given Nobel Prize for their reaction mechanisms uh, for such type of or for branched chain reaction. Okay, uh, so uh, general we will derive the generalized rate equation for the branched chain reaction, and then uh, we will see what is what is the effect of the quantum yield on or what is the effect of the number of chain carriers on the rate so uh, suppose if we are considering any general gaseous reaction wherein we are considering that we have a reactant a is our reactant and this reactant it reacts with our this reactant uh, a is our reactant then r is our reactive chain carrier so this reactant will be converted into a reactive chain carrier p is the product that is formed and alpha are the number of chain carriers which are produced so by one carrier or a number of chain carriers that are produced during the propagation step reactions or the steps we can write it as uh, first will be a will k1 and we will have r so a will be converted into a reactive chain carrier r and k1 is the rate so this is our uh, chain initiation this is our chain initiation step then next will be the propagation so this active chain active carrier will react with another a where k2 will have product t plus alpha r and this is our chain propagation step and the third so this is the chain propagation step and the last one is our reactive carrier suppose we write k3 and then it is uh, destructed so the destruction of the active carrier will take place and generally it is known as chain termination so these are the three steps that are involved and over here k1 k2 and k3 are the rates where k3 is the rate of destruction and rate of destruction of the free radicals we may refer it as free radical so that may take place by two methods first is either they collide with the walls and they lose the energy or two free radicals they combine with each other to form molecules so if they combine collide with pole we can write it as kw and if they are colliding with each other then we may write it as kg so k3 we can write it as kw plus kg okay so these are the steps involved in the branched chain reaction now over here the rate of the formation of the carrier that is r uh, it can be written as the rate of formation of carrier dr upon dt we can write it as first this k1 so we can write k1 into a 
it is formed over here then we may write it as minus k2 into r into a plus we can write alpha k2 into r into a and then minus k3 into r okay so uh, this is the rate of the first step second step and third step okay so as in third step it is consumed it is minus okay over here it is also consumed so it is minus here it is formed so it is plus okay so the total rate will be over here it is formed so plus this it is consumed so minus it is formed plus and it is consumed so minus okay and again we may apply steady state approximation to this because it is the rate and from steady state approximation we know that the rate of intermediate formation is always equal to zero so that this we can write it equal to zero and when we equate it this expression equal to zero and then we can rearrange this expression in the form of concentration of r so when we rearrange this in the form of concentration of r uh, we can take this this and this on right hand side so we will have k1 into a that will be equal to and we can take r common out from all this uh, we can write this will be plus sorry k2 into a minus alpha k2 into a plus k3 okay and further we can rearrange this expression and we can write r is equal to this will be k1 into a and all this will come in the denominator further k2 a i can take common out from both these terms so we'll have k2 into a into 1 minus alpha plus k3 so this expression it gives the concentration of our intermediate or concentration of our reactant uh, concentration of our intermediate that is formed okay and over here this k3 again as i have told we can write it as uh, kw plus kg where kw is the rate of uh, when collision with walls takes place and kg is the rate constant when the gas surface reaction takes place and hence our expression will become k1 into a into k2 into a 1 minus alpha plus kw plus kg okay so this is the expression now over here uh, we may have two cases first case when alpha is equal to 1 so in case 1 when alpha is equal to 1 at that time each propagation sequence uh, it results in the formation of uh, the product molecule with the regeneration of only one carrier so when alpha is equal to 1 only one carrier molecule is formed and such a reactions uh, they are called as non-branched or they are called stationary reactions so when alpha is equal to 1 at that time when reactions are taking place at that time only one carrier molecule per chain is formed and as a result the reaction will be a non-branched or it will be a linear reaction or it is also known as stationary reactions and all the pyrolysis reactions of organic compounds they are the example of non-branched uh, reactions and the case second when alpha is greater than one so when alpha is greater than one at that time more than one more than one chain carrier are formed per molecule and as a result the propagation sequence uh, is very much fast and such reactions they are known as the branch chain reactions or they are also known as non-stationary reactions and uh, one of the examples of a non-stationary reaction is formation of hcl where the quantum yield is around 10 10 to the power 4 to 10 to the power 6 the rate, rate of reaction is very very high and uh, when more than one chain carriers are formed then that type of reactions are called uh, branched reactions or non-stationary reactions now there is one more situation when alpha is very very greater than one so in such case when alpha is very very greater than one then under such circumstances very large number of chain carriers are produced in the propagation sequence and as a result the concentration of 
r it will tend to become infinite okay so as alpha is very very greater than 1 alpha will be very very greater than 1 means it has very very large value so when it is very very large value then uh, it will be very very larger than 1 this will be very very larger value and as this very very larger value then uh, we know that something upon 1 upon very large value is almost infinity and hence r will tend to infinity and as r tends to infinity the rate of the reaction it becomes almost infinite and as a result explosion will take place or the reaction mixture will explode okay and when r tends to infinity so uh, from this equation we can see that when the value of the denominator that is uh, we can write k2 into a into 1 minus alpha it is equal to minus kw plus kg so when this term will be equal to minus 10 the, at that time the denominator will be equal to 0 and we know that something upon 0 will be infinity and as a result the value of r tends to infinity and such a explosion is generally known as the isothermal explosion isothermal explosion meaning that the rea the temperature it remains same and the explosion takes place we may also observe that transition of the reaction from very slow rate to very rapid explosion uh, it depends upon the magnitudes or it depends upon the values of kw plus kg and k2 into a into 1 minus alpha okay so the transition of the reaction from very slow reaction to the explosion limit it depends on both this or it depends on the values of or magnitude of both these terms now how it depends over here we know that kw is our rate of destruction of chain when it hits with the walls okay so this uh, the destruction of or the diffusion of the gas molecules the diffusion of the gas molecules on the walls it depends on the pressure okay that is if the pressure is low then the molecules will diffuse to the walls and as a result uh, and as a result the chain termination will take place and uh, as a result the value of kw it remains very low and uh, explosion will not take place and this gives the lower explosion uh, limit now when the with the increase in the pressure what will happen when we increase the pressure as a result the molecules will tend to react with each other and in the vessel and diffusion to the walls will decrease and uh, the reaction of the molecules with each other increases and as a result the value of kw decreases but the value of uh, kg over here it increases and hence the term that is we have this term that is kw into kg plus k2 into a 1 minus alpha this still remains positive okay it still remains positive because this is less but this is very high as when if we are increasing the pressure the collisions are increasing between the molecule and hence uh, kg it remains high and as a result the whole term is positive and still reaction or still reaction is under control but if we increase the pressure further then what will happen then this term that is this term will counterbalance this particular term and as a result the explosion will take place so as the pressure is increased both the terms will counterbalance each other and as a result explosion will take place and this explosion is called the first explosion limit now again further if we increase the pressure then again the chain ending process in the gas phase again it predominates and again the term that is this particular term it again steadily increases and again there is an explosion and that explosion is called second explosion limit okay and above the second explosion limit again the reaction it proceeds with the finite steady rate and uh, over here uh, you can see the 
graph also that is the reaction between hydrogen and oxygen is shown wherein uh, on this axis we have reaction rate and the lower axis we have pressure so we can see that the as we increase the pressure there is first explosion that is our first explosion limit then again the rate there is the steady reaction and again there is explosion so the first explosion where uh, uh, explosion occurs that is our first explosion limit second explosion when the final explosion occurs so this is our first explosion limit now further if, as we increase the pressure then we get our second explosion limit after the second explosion limit again there is a steady reaction and further if we increase the reaction or further if we increase the pressure then there would be again explosion okay so this is how the effect of our chain carriers takes place and uh, explosion occurs and generally uh, we may say that the nuclear reactions all the nuclear reactions that are taking place they are also branched chain reaction hope the explanation was clear thank you very much